first of all, spending your hard earned dosh on a ticket to see me in these tough times. Thanks very much for that. It means a lot. Sold out show. Yeah. <laughs> in these tough times, spending your hard earned dosh on a ticket to see any comedian this year, knowing that there's a good chance we are paying fuck all tax. Oh. <laughs> well done for that. People thought Jimmy Carr got it bad. Wait to the press, hear about me. I'm still signing on. <laughs> I get asked last week, what kind of music, what kind of music do you like, Kev? I don't know. I don't have a fucking clue. What kind of music? Uh, modern stuff just sounds the same to me. Just uh, everything's just all that R&B stuff we like these days, isn't it? In the club, all that sort of stuff. You'd, everybody in the club, in the club. <laughs> See what every song sounds to me. In the club, in the club, in the club. <laughs> I just speak in a language I don't get. Everybody gonna shuffle on down in the club. <laughs> We're getting freaky in the club. I'm feeling sexy in the club. 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 DJ spinning my song in the club. In the club. <laughs> Everything happens in this club with these pricks, doesn't it? In the club. <laughs> we ain't gonna stop till it's time to start again. In the club. In the club. In the club. In the club. <laughs> Those songs that just make you feel thick, you, you actually feel it deleting cookies in your brain. In the club, in the club, in the club, in the club. And the song finishes and you think, fucking hell, I now know less stuff. <laughs> I've just forgot the difference between a pastoral and an arable farm. <laughs> the fuck did I just forget standard grade geography there because of that song? In the club, in the club, in the club. Even their names, Will I Am, that guy. How, how do you get to that stage in your celebrity status, Will I Am? His name is William. He's just decided to start putting full stops in the middle. <laughs> oh, I am. If I was to request to be known as Kev I-N, I'd get a fucking slap in the face. <laughs> if I was to sit my dad down and say, Dad, I'm thinking about, thinking about reinventing myself as Kev I-N. He'd be saying, just run that by me again, son. <laughs> well, I step outside, talk me through this. <laughs> uh, that song, Bruno Mars, that's when I lost a bit of faith in modern, modern music. I'd catch, I'd catch a grenade for you, that song. Heard that a few years ago. So on a lot, I'd catch a grenade for you. That's, like, that's what passes for romance these days. That's a love song in the modern day. I would catch a grenade for you. That's the guy singing about the depths of his love. But what I'm guessing is his girlfriend that he's prepared to catch. I don't mean to offer the guy relationship advice, but if you're dating somebody who people are chucking grenades at. <laughs> that's your first fucking problem right there. Oh. Is that an ex of yours? Fucking hell. Well, what does he plan on taking her? A romantic stroll down the Hellman province? <laughs> Come on. I'll fucking catch them. Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I remember watching a Danny Dyer documentary <laughs> about the old firm. And it was good to see somebody like him. Danny Dyer, he, he's the prick's prick, isn't he? <laughs> To see him, not sometimes you just flick through the channels and you see he's on Britain's most deadliest men, him talking to some big wall puncher. Guys, gonna, I'm the kind of bloke, if, if you don't mess with me, I'll be alright, but if you mess with me, I'll, I'll fuck you up. <laughs> Danny Dyer's going, Can I be your friend? <laughs> He'd done a special on football rivalries and he was outside Ibrox in the morning of an old firm game and he's talking to the camera, this guy, made me laugh, he's going, he's going, Celtic and the Catholics and Rangers and the Protestants, I'm outside the stadium on old firm day, one of football's most deadliest rivalries, I'm here outside the stadium on match day and I'm not afraid to say, I am fucking shaking. <laughs> There's people walking behind them, just waving at the camera, going... <laughs> it was like half ten on a Sunday morning. 
He's gone, I'm a fucking tough bloke. I've seen some stuff. But today, I'm fucking petrified. <laughs> the guy walks behind him with a bacon roll and a cup of tea. <laughs> he says, come on, Rangers. He's gone, it's fucking kicked off now. <laughs> Or poo. That's annoying. Adults that still say poo. Uh, guys, uh, can we stop the car? Uh, really have to go for a poo. <laughs> How do you see your ID here? <laughs> You're over seven and you want to go for a poo. <laughs> <laughs> that's that new voice that's creeping in. You know that? Hey guys, that sort of voice. I'm, I'm, I still live in Glasgow. I moved out of my family home about eight months ago. I live in the West End, and that's the way. I've got that new... <laughs> not that new homogenised. Like, hey, hey, guys, uh, what's your chart? Not that new, Scott. What, what's your chart? Uh, yeah, we were out last night for Callum's birthday drinks, and... Uh, yeah. Oh, wasn't Fraser's banter totally banging, wasn't it? <laughs> Fraser, oh, it was Callum, Callum and Gavin are such a double act, aren't they, though? Oh. Their banter was on fire. <laughs> top chat, yeah, really top chat, top banter. To totally top bants. All I remember was Rebecca bought me a Jaeger bomb, and then, uh, <laughs> me and Gavin were planking in Burger King. And, uh, <laughs> I woke up this morning, I was actually dying. Top banter, top chart. <laughs> <laughs> that's the way they fucking talk. That's the kind of freaks I live beside these days. <laughs> top banter. <laughs> I moved it. I, I've never, I got on the property ladder, bought myself a nice wee flat. And I've never viewed a property in my fucking life, but I was, I was needing a bit of advice. My dad. He volunteered himself as the property expert. He said, if you're going to view in places, son, I'm going to come with. Because what will happen is you'll walk into a nice wee flat, you'll get excited. The guy who owns it will see you're excited. Then the fucking price goes up. Whereas me, poker face. <laughs> <laughs> He's never viewed a property in his life. My dad's been in the same council house his whole fucking life. You don't, you don't go and view a council flat. You just. You don't get a survey or a home report done. You just get told, that's where you're going to live now. Get fucking in. <laughs> but he's volunteered himself as a property expert. Me and him are rocking up there. If you're this guy's gaff, me and him look like fucking Colin and Justin walking up. <laughs> <laughs> my dad's going poker faces. We never even get into the guy's house. And my dad had dissolved. Just going, look, that car's got a valid tax task. I've got a few quid up here. Get a wee photograph of that, sir. <laughs> Wherever you go in your happy place, you start to find it. You get to know yourself. And I, I looked at the window, and there was a stationery shop. I never knew I liked stationery until that minute. Just <laughs> looking there, I'm going, that's a fucking great deal on rubbers. <laughs> when was the last time I rubbed something out? I might go in there, buy their rubbers. I might buy a pencil, sharpen it, a nice new pad, nice sharp pencil, write my name, and then just fucking rub it out. <laughs> By the time I had come back in for a landing, this situation had been resolved. A good Samaritan had put the extra money in just to get the bus moving, and the guy was on. He'd made it. Everybody's bracing themselves. Where's he going to sit? It's quite a quiet bus. I'm just going, fuck. The guy's on. And it was then I, I realised that I was, I was sat in the seats that are designed for conversation. You know the seats that face in opposite directions? <laughs> for people looking for stimulating debate with like-minded folk on the world's big issues. Speaker's corner, that's where I was sat. <laughs> and the guy, he came in and sat right opposite me. He never recognised me, oblivious to the fact he was sitting opposite KVN. Never fucking... <laughs> And the bus, the bus is pulling away. He, he's not going to a happy place. He's looking at that station and shot. I might go in there and buy a pencil, sharpen it and stab him in the eye to fucking wank up. <laughs> <laughs> the bus is going on and he started talking to me. He said, where are you going, mate? And I said, I'm just going to meet my mate at the cinema. And he said, I've not been to the cinema. I've not been to the cinema. 
in fucking ages. Right? And I said, oh, all right. <laughs> He's struggling for small talk. You need to keep it going. You don't want to get hanging you're benignant. I just said, oh, all right. And he said, do you ever see that movie, Social Network? That's what he asked me. And I said, oh, the movie about Facebook. And he said, correct. <laughs> As if you survived that fucking round. He said, that Mark Zuckerberg, he's worth billions, mate. And I said, oh, I can imagine. And he said, how? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, he's the owner of Facebook. And he said, aye, but how does that make money, mate? It's fucking free. <laughs> and you don't laugh. The onboard safety instructions tell you to do it. <laughs> In order to avoid a punctured lung, keep your face firmly. <laughs> keep your face firmly on screensaver mode. Just He said, if I was in charge of Facebook, mate, I'd be saying fucking quid a go. <laughs> and it gave me a small sense of hometown pride, but I realised the guy was serious. <laughs> small sense of hometown pride that there must be very few places in the world where Mark Zuckerberg would be offered financial advice <laughs> from a guy who was 15 pence short for a single <laughs> fucking buck. <laughs> <It was> <laughs>